So, how to properly export your music? I get this asked all the time. On this video, I'm going to explain to you everything that you need to know about it. Welcome back to the Toman Studio and Recording Channel. My name is Claudio, I'm a lifelong music producer, musician, and I run these awesome studios here in central London called Dr. Mix. On this channel, I explain everything about mixing, mastering, production, if you want to know more about it and you don't want to miss one episode, just make sure you're subscribed to this channel and also hit the bell notification so that you don't miss out. So let's dive into it. Exporting is something that everyone needs to do at a certain point because you may want to send your music out for mastering to a professional studio or maybe because you want to export your multi-track to have some, uh, somebody else work on it, maybe a collaboration project with somebody else. And yes, there are a few things that you need to be mindful of. Bitrate and sample rate. So what bitrate and sample rate should you use to export your track? That depends entirely on what bitrate and sample rate you used in the first place to record the track. Now, this information is uh, on uh, Cubase, you can, you can find it here, project setup. As you can see, we have a nice 44.1 kilohertz, which is pretty standard, and 24 bits, which is pretty standard as well. You can go up to 32 bits. Um, I wouldn't necessarily advise to um, uh, record at any higher resolution because it doesn't really make any significant difference unless you are talking about, you know, classical music, orchestral recording with very expensive studios, then, then maybe, but generally speaking, you will be more than fine with 44.1K, 24 bit, that's what I suggest you use as a default on your system when you start recording anything. So on this occasion, I have recorded 44.1 kilohertz at 24 bit, and that's what we want to export to, all right? Cool, the reason why you wanna export to the same resolution is because you want to avoid transcoding, because every time you do that, uh, basically you're, you're passing the music through an algorithm that you know changes slightly the sound although it's uh, not really you can't you can't really hear it if you do it once if you do it a few times then you know and then you're not sure what you're doing you might mess up the sounds so just to be on the safe side use the same settings so uh, let me show you in this case with Cubase you can export two ways one is the simple stereo out you're passing the mix two channels However, you can also record the individual tracks, in which case you can select this and it will export everything. The output channels, these are the effects channels, these are the instrument tracks, these are the audio channels. So uh, Cubase does a pretty great job at this and you can just select everything and it will export all the correct files. All you do is export audio, you, you choose here um, in, in, in the case of multiple files, the name doesn't really matter because it gives the name as this format. Uh, name of the channel, channel number, you know, you, you, can, you, you can change this, you know, you can switch them around, remove, and, and you can decide your, um, your own way of exporting. But otherwise, all you need to do is export and it will save onto this folder, yeah? It's folder specified here. And it works uh, the same pretty much for every program. I will uh, give you a montage at the end where I show you how to do it on different DAWs. Now, let's talk about levels. So when you are exporting, the number one thing is that you want to make sure that you don't overload the channels. Like for example, let's go this song, yeah, you see? This is the master, so the master is not reaching above 10, which is great for mastering. You know, you just want to leave a little bit of, you know, air up here, you know, a little bit of overhead so that you, you, you give your mastering engineer a chance to do the trick. You see what I mean? So definitely make sure that it doesn't hit the red. Like for example, if you have, um, 
if you have the stereo out, you know, definitely you don't, you want to make sure we don't go on a red. Mm. Definitely not. And that's for exporting the uh, mix. But as well, if you're exporting the multi-track, you want to make sure that none of these tracks goes on a red. So as long as you do that, you will be fine and um, your mastering engineer or your mix engineer will be able to correctly import. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is timeline. So what you want to make sure here is that all of the tracks that you export are lining up correctly. How do you do this? Well, you have to set the left locator at the very beginning and you have to set the right locator just, you know, just make sure that, you know, the music is actually finished and, you know, there, is, there may be reverbs with a little tail, so maybe you want to add a few more bars just to make sure that the sound has a chance to completely finish, even the reverbs. Once you've done that, the system will export every single track from the very beginning till this point, which means when your sound engineer or your collaborator imports the tracks on his or her system, they will all line up and your arrangement will be reconstructed properly. Another thing that I usually tend to do is I take the BPM, which in this case is down here, the BPM, the tempo of the track, and I just include it into the title of the folder. So in the title of the folder, if, if your song is called My Life, you want to call it My Life Multitrack 74 BPM. That way, the next person who's working on it knows that all they need to do is import the tracks, put them all to zero in the timeline, and then select 74 BPM and everything will be just perfectly lined up. Of course, for mastering, this is less important because you are exporting just one file. However, it's always a good idea to start from zero. Even if it leaves a little bit of silence in front, that's good. Just, just leave it there because your mastering engineers know what to do with it. And sometimes you can also export stem mastering. So maybe you may want to export drums, bass, vocals and everything else as four uh, stereo files. It's a good idea in that case, again, to start from zero and make sure that every file lines up. Yeah? Does that explain everything? So right now, let's watch a montage on how to do this very thing on different systems. Awesome! I hope that this was useful to you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Ask them in the comments here below. I will try to answer them, as always. And I will see you on the next episode. See you. Bye.